This video will cover models with binary dependent variables, including linear probability models and loaded models. At the end of this video, you should feel comfortable estimating a linear probability or loaded model, interpreting the results, identifying situations where a linear probability model might not be appropriate, and making predictions in a linear probability or loaded model. Let's start with an empirical question. How does ability relate to the likelihood that an individual graduates from high school? As always, let's think for a moment about the data we might use to answer this question. If we had information on education and a measure of ability for a sample of individuals, we could compare those two quantities. Let's again turn to the NLSY. For this sample of individuals, we know the number of years of education, S, and a test score, ASVAB composite, that could be considered a measure of ability. The ASVAB score would make a reasonable independent variable in the model, but what about the dependent variable? We want not just the number of years of education, but whether the individual completed high school. Note that this is a yes or no question. Accordingly, it would make sense to use a binary variable to describe high school graduation equal to 1 if the individual earned a high school diploma and 0 if not. In Stata, we could create this variable by testing whether the years of education is greater than or equal to 12 the last year of high school. I will call it HS grad for high school graduation. With this new variable, we could estimate a model where high school graduation is a dependent variable and ability is the independent variable. What is different about this model? We have studied mod models with binary variables before. When a binary variable, such as one describing a gender or a race, was used as an independent variable, we called it a dummy variable or an indicator variable. Now, the binary variable is the dependent variable. It is fine to do this, but we'll have to think carefully about how to interpret the model's results. Let's estimate this new model in Stata and examine the results. A good place to start understanding the model's results would be to use the estimated slope and intercept to write the predicted values of the HS grad variable. Suppose we wanted to predict whether an individual with an ASVAB score of 50, approximately the mean score in the sample, is a high school graduate. Plugging in 50 for ASVAB C, the predicted value of HS grad is 0 0.92. For any given individual, HS grad must be either 0 or 1, so what is the meaning of a predicted value of 0 0.92? Remember that a predicted value is also an expected value. If 100 people have, had, have an ASVAB score of 50, and they each have a predicted value of HS grad of 0 0.92, then we would expect that 92 out of those 100 individuals have a high school diploma. In other words, the predicted value tells us that an individual with an ASVAB score of 50 has a 0 0.92 probability, or a 92% chance, of having a high school diploma. This realization should also help us to interpret the slope coefficient in the model. A one unit increase in the ASVAB C is associated with a 0 0.013 unit increase in HS grad. Applying the probability interpretation, a one point increase on the ASVAB composite is associated with an increase in the probability of an individual having a high school diploma of 0 0.0126. A linear regression model like the, this one with a binary dependent variable is also called a linear probability model because the model is linear in parameters, its predicted values can be interpreted as probabilities of the dependent variable equaling 1, and the coefficient on an independent variable is the marginal effect of that variable on the probability of the dependent variable equaling 1. Let's use the same model to predict the probability that an individual with an ASVAB score of 60 has a high school diploma. A score of 60 is relatively high, almost the 90th percentile of the sample. Plugging in ASVAB C equals 60, we predict HS grad to be 1.05. If we apply the same type of interpretation literally, an individual with an ASVAB score of 60 has a 1.05 probability of having a high school diploma. Of course, probabilities cannot be greater than 1. So how do we get this value? Put simply, a linear model does not guarantee that the predicted values are between 0 and 1. To see this more clearly, 
Let's take a graphical look at our model by plotting the hsgrad variable versus the asvab composite. Given that the dependent variable is binary, the data points all lie along one of two horizontal lines, the bottom one for hsgrad equals zero, or individuals without a high school diploma, and the top one for hsgrad equals one, or individuals with a high school diploma. Although perhaps not the most intuitive graph, some features seem sensible. There are many individuals with high ASVAB scores who do have a diploma, but there are few individuals with high ASVAB scores who do not have a diploma. By estimating a linear regression, we are, as always, finding the best fit line that minimizes the sum of squared residuals. Although the unusual display of data might make the best fit line difficult to draw by hand, we should certainly expect a positive slope given that there are few values of HS grad equals zero when ASVAB is relatively large. Mathematically, any line with a non-zero slope ranges from negative infinity to positive infinity, so there are no guarantees that the predicted values of HS grad are between zero and one for reasonable values of ASVAB C. The graph shows that there is a range of ASVAB scores for which the predicted probabilities are indeed greater than one. This is the first sign that a linear probability model may be insufficient in some situations. Let's motivate a possible solution by asking the following question. What should the relationship be between ability and the probability of a high school diploma? Most likely, individuals with the highest test scores will have probabilities near one of having a high school diploma. Those with lower test scores may have slightly lower probabilities. As we decrease test scores to the low end of the sample, the probability of having a high school diploma may drop off more sharply as those low scores may be reaching a threshold below which high school graduation becomes more questionable. Perhaps we could imagine this curve eventually approaching zero, a zero probability if we continue to the left, but of course it would never drop below zero. In summary, we expect that this relationship has two horizontal asymptotes at zero and at one. Because of these asymptotes, the relationship must have a steeper region in the middle where the test score has a relatively large effect on the probability of a high school diploma. So here is a proposal for fixing our problem of predicting the probability of an event. Instead of a linear probability model, where the probability of a high school diploma depends linearly on the ASVAB score, let's assume that it is a nonlinear function. That nonlinear function, f, should have the shape that we just described, approaching 1 on the right side and 0 on the left side. One such function is a logistic function, f of z equals 1 over 1 plus e to the power of negative z. You might take a moment to convince yourself that this function fits the bill. If z equals 0, e to the power of 0 is 1, so f of 0 equals 1 half. As z approaches positive infinity, e to the power of z approaches 0, so f of z approaches 1. As z approaches negative infinity, e to the power of z approaches infinity, so f of z approaches 0. As in a linear probability model, the parameters beta1 and beta2 affect the shape of the relationship between ASVAB C and the probability of a high school diploma. The procedure of estimating beta1 and beta2 using data is called a logistic regression, or a logit model for short. Let's try estimating a logit model in Stata. Just like an ordinary least squares regression, we must specify a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. The command is logit, followed by the dependent variable and any independent variables. Here is Stata's output. Much of it looks quite similar to the output for an OLS regression, although there are some differences that, we'll, that we will discuss in the future. For now, note that the output still contains a coefficient for ASVAB C, which is the estimate of beta 2, and a constant, or intercept, which is the estimate of beta 1. Just as in a linear probability model, we can use these estimate, estimates to calculate a predicted probability of having a high school diploma. Let's try making a prediction with this model. 
Let's again predict the probability that an individual with an ASVAB score of 50 is a high school graduate. We can plug in 50 for ASVAB C and do this arithmetic to get a value of 3.66 for this expression. Of course, this number is not yet the predicted probability. It is Z, the argument of the logit function. To calculate this predicted probability, we need to plug in Z equals 3.66 into the logit function. This yields a probability of 0.975. So the logit model predicts that an individual with a median ASVAB score has a 97.5% chance of having a high school diploma. As an exercise, try predicting the probability that an individual with an ASVAB score of 60 is a high school graduate. Use the results from the logit model and the logistic function where appropriate. You may wish to pause the video here while you work through the problem. Now let's talk through the problem. We can again use the same coefficients to write a predicted probability. Plugging in ASVAB C equals 60 yields Z equals 5.60. Plugging this value of Z into the logistic function yields 0.996. So an individual with an ASVAB score of 60 has a 99.6% chance of having a high school diploma. At this point, it may be worth comparing the predictions of the two models we just considered. We made predictions for ASVAB scores of 50 and 60, roughly the median and 90th percentile respectively. The predicted probabilities from the linear probability model were 0.921 and 1.048 respectively. The predicted probabilities for the logit model were much closer to one another, 0.975 and 0.996. Aside from the obvious problem with the linear probability model prediction of a probability greater than 1, can we judge which is closer to the truth? One method is to look at the proportion of individuals with ASVAB scores near 50 or 60 who have a high school diploma. We can use Stata to summarize the HS grad variable for individuals with scores of about 50, plus or minus 2.5 points, and for individuals with scores of about 60. The averages of this binary, binary dependent variable tell us the actual proportion of individuals with scores near 50 and 60. Compare these averages, or proportions, to the predicted probabilities from the two models. The logit model performed far better. The predicted probabilities differ from the actual proportions of those with the high school diploma by a fraction of a percentage point. By contrast, the linear probability model underpredicted the probability for a score of 50 and overpredicted for a score of 60. We can also see this graphically by repeating both the predictions and the averages for more values of the ASVAB score. Here is the result. The dots represent the proportion of individuals with a high school diploma for a variety of ASVAB composite scores. As you can see, the pattern is clearly nonlinear, and the logit model predictions fit the pattern much better than the linear probability model. While the logit model is not guaranteed to produce more accurate predictions, we have seen that it avoids predictions that do not make sense for a probability model. In many situations, there is also a reason to believe that the function relating a probability to an independent variable will take on the shape of the logit model. In this case, we might think that individuals with very low test scores would be unlikely to complete high school, but that a small increase in test scores would increase that probability substantially. By contrast, individuals with, with median test scores or higher are very likely to complete high school, and a few additional points on the ASVAB would not improve the probability substantially. This is consistent with the shape of the logit function, which has a steep section, in this case for scores below 40, and a flatter section for higher scores. Put slightly differently, the logit model allows the marginal effect of the test score on the probability of high school graduation to differ across the range of test scores. We will explore marginal effects in logit models more in the future.